So in this image, the brain has been taken out here for the most part. So we can see those verts coming up, wrapping around, like we said, here they are coming up. Here's the dural entrance coming up, going underneath all those lower cranial nerves, um, coming up and uh, wrapping around anteriorly and forming that vertebro, sorry, forming that vertebro basilar junction um, on the clivus, right? So here's the midline, here's the clivus, and this is where we would expect to see that petroclival fissure we saw earlier. Um, and then this is that long axis of the posterior surface of the petrous bone, because here we have seven and eight, here's our petrous ridge, here's fifth nerve coming up and over, um, and there's uh, our, in this direction would be the superior petrosal sinus. So we have five um, and <clears throat> six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12 down here. So in this case, we can also see the pica coming out. Um, this is a much higher origin than we looked in the last slide. So pica is branching off here. Um, in this case, it's kind of pulling uh, uh, what looks like uh, ninth nerve uh, or, or rooted with it. And then it's coming up and coursing around, going between the nerves, entering the jugular foramen um, as it loops back around. I think this is, you know, this has been manipulated a little bit, but this one uh, is a little bit more of a natural course. And if we move that brainstem entirely, we can see also the anterior spinal artery that's uh, going down anteriorly to the spine. So now we're going to switch from this posterior view to an anterior view, looking posterior. So Let's just reorient ourselves. So now we're sitting anteriorly. We're basically sitting on top of the anterior cranial fossa and we're looking purely posteriorly in the midline. And um, so here, this is the left side. This is the right side. And we can see those for that vertebral artery coming up right here on both sides, joining together to form the vertebral basilar junction and form the basilar trunk, which is the basilar artery, the, the, you know, the majority of it, and from which we get the ica, the anterior inferior cerebellar artery, which comes out in courses between, near seven and eight, about the level of the seventh and eighth nerve as they enter the IAC, right? So which we can see right here. Here's seven and eight. Here's the ica. Actually, sorry. Here's here, oh yeah, here's the ICA, and that ICA also forms a loop. In this case, it's coming up and going through seven and eight. Uh, it might be a little bit different on the other side, but here's the ICA coming off the basal artery um, at about at the level of seven and eight. And um, we can also see here, here's the pica coming off the vertebral artery, inferior to uh, the level of the uh, ICA. In this case, this one's wrapping around like we saw, so anterior medullary. Um, lateral medullary and coming around and coursing inferiorly caudally to form that caudal loop. And if we just take a quick look of where we are anatomically, we're sitting here, right? So here's our second nerve going in in this direction towards the optic canal on top of the ophthalmic segment of the carotid artery. Here's our pituitary gland, our hypothesis. Uh, here's that free edge of the tentorium. You can kind of match up what's you know being cut here so starting from the top, we have two, three, coming up, three, uh, uh, coming up from its origin, three coming out, oculomotor triangle, cavernous sinus exiting. We have four uh, with the free edge, uh, which would be around, right around here. And we can see it coming around from its, its origin posteriorly. It's wrapping around all the way, joining that free edge and coming out. We have fifth nerve here. And here, you know, this is the fifth nerve root entry zone um, coming up and over that petrous ridge uh, and then trifurcating into V3, V2, and V1. And just beneath it, we have sixth nerve um, going into Dorello's canal, and we can see sixth nerve here and here. And then we have seven and eight straight direct into the internal auditory canal. Um, don't forget the GSPN also comes off of the, of the geniculate ganglion from seventh nerve, geniculate ganglion, then we have the greater superficial petrosal nerve 
running superior to and parallel to the Petrus carotid, which we can see here, coming underneath B3 on its way to Pavidian canals. Um, and um, let's zoom in a little bit closer on the right side and have a closer look. So same, same, pretty much same perspective, right side, we're looking down, you know, here's the vertebral artery coming up, here's that vertebral basal junction, here's the pica coming up, and here's the ica coming off the basilar. So remember, pica comes off the vert, ica comes off the basilar trunk, ica is about the level of seven and eight, fairly consistent, um, also forms a loop, pica variable, um, but at some point, usually intradural. Um, what we also see here, here's, remember, here's our third nerve going this way on top of the posterior clinoid, fourth nerve again wrapping around, so this is where the free edge of the tent would be. And if this is the free edge of the tent, it would mean that this vessel is infratentorial, which means that this would be the superior cerebellar artery. So the basal artery comes up, forms the basilar tip, gives off the SCA, and then splits into the PCAs, which we'll come back to. SCA comes around, and supplies that superior surface of the cerebellum like we saw before. So three, four, five, six is right here, seven and eight right here. Seven and eight into the internal auditory canal and out and over. So remember, this is the middle fossa. This is that anterior surface of the petrous bone. This is where the petrous ridge was. And then everything down here, posterior fossa um, and uh, posterior circulation. Uh, we can also see here we have a bunch of perforators that are going uh, to the brainstem midbrain from uh, the the vert and the basilar. The high, a lot of perforators going on here of all vessels, not just uh, basilar but SCA and ICA as well. Um, and if we go now, let's go to the the other side. Let's go to the left side and have a look because the dura here was removed. So let's look at, with the dura intact, what that looks like. So we're just zooming in on the left side here. We can still see that vertebral basilar junction. We have the left vert, right vert, basilar trunk again. Here's that ica. You can see the ica in this case is coming in, you know, going really towards seven and eight as they enter the IAC, giving off the labyrinthine and subarcuate arteries, very tiny going into the IAC. Um, here's the, the left cerebellar hemisphere. Um, we can see, again, fifth nerve on its straight course into Meckel's cave. Sixth nerve right here going into Dorello's canal. Third nerve right here. Uh, fourth nerve right here. Um, and then a little, if we look a little bit deeper, we can start to see those lower cranial nerves as they are entering the jugular foramen. Here we also have the superior petrosal vein, which is draining into that superior petrosal sinus, which is, as we see right here, running along that free edge of the tentorium. Let's go back, actually, you can see it a little more clearly here, because remember, here, uh, I'm sorry, running, uh, running against the Petrus Ridge, I meant to say. Here's that Petrus Ridge like we've, uh, we've been looking at, same over here, and you can see exactly where that superior petrosal sinus is running. And this is just the vein that's draining into it. So um, this is a top-down view of the brainstem, and the brainstem is being retracted here. So we're, in this case, we're looking from the top down along that long axis of the clivus. Um, this is not uh, uh, the IAC, um, but I don't want to get you confused. This is where the posterior clinoids would be right here. Here's the carotid. Uh, here's the pituitary in the midline. So we're just pulling that brainstem back. And in this case, we're, we can see sixth nerve on its way to Dorello's canal exiting the dura. Uh, Durell's canal, remember, is roofed by the petrosphenoidal ligament or grouper's ligament, and sixth nerve enters cavernous sinus underneath B1 on the way to the superior orbital fissure. So um, here, uh, so we have um, three, um, we don't really see four here, but five, six, and seven and eight down here. Um, and, but really, um, we're looking here at the vertebral basilar junction. So we can see those, those left and right verts coming together. We can see the ica coming off the basilar. And um, we can see the relationship, most importantly, between the clivus and the basilar artery. And um, we, we know that the, the basilar artery runs along the clivus, 
Um, but the vertical point at which the vertebral arteries merge, the level of the vertebral basal or junction, can be variable. Um, and depending on where that is, it's known as high riding um, or low riding relative uh, to the clivus. So um, high riding or low riding basilar refers to the point at which the basilar artery forms in relation to the level of the clivus. Um, and here, this is a pretty normal riding uh, vertebral basilar junction. And uh, we have the vertebral basilar junction, ICA, SCA, and PCA is here. With this, this thing that's cut here is the posterior communicating artery. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.